iGEM is the International Genetically Engineered Machines Competition. Last year, 40 teams took part. This year, there are over 100 teams taking part. Primary work happens over the summer where seven team members get together and design, model, and produce genetically engineered machines. I think one of the great things about this program that a lot of internships don't offer is sort of a very undergraduate focused um, research. The iGEM project is particularly interesting to me because you know I have pretty much two options in front of me. I can work with a professor and do what they want me to do, or I can you know work with another group of undergraduates and really have input and determine what we do. Each of the team members is free to come up with their own idea that they choose to design, model, and create in the lab. It's our own project and we implement them in the lab. Um, of course, we have help from graduate students and professors, but mainly it is a undergraduate-focused research. The great thing about iGEM at Brown is that we have a number of different team members with all kinds of backgrounds working together. So you have a lot of skills coming into one project. The iGEM faculty come from electronic engineering, computer science, biological science, chemistry, physics, engineering, a whole range that come together in this interdisciplinary competition. It's really important to standardize biology to make it easier to engineer because you want to have a lot of groups that can use the same pieces of DNA and that can build on each other's work to really advance science. iGEM is sort of open source biology. The Registry of Standard Biological Parts is a place at MIT where they store and curate biological parts, these bio brick sequences of DNA that they then send out to the teams each year. The coolest thing about iGEM is being able to just go into the fridge that we have in our lab and just select the part that we want and just take it out and use it. To create our systems, we use the parts that MIT sends us. So we just go to our fridge, we take out the parts that we need, we put them together in a new way that may have never been done before, test them, see if they work, and then send them back to MIT as a new part. So the registry continues to grow as students enter in new pieces of DNA. Last year there were 600 parts in the registry. This year there are 1,000 parts in the registry. It just keeps growing and growing. And we get more tools, more sequences of DNA that we can characterize and use to build new systems with. When you're engineering computers, you have people working at several different levels. So you have someone who's creating the circuit board, you have someone who's writing the code, someone who's using the code to create something or do something with the computer. The same sort of phenomenon seems to be happening in biology. This is the first time that a group of people are trying to make the engineering of biology simple. I think biology and computer science have a lot in common and in the same way that you would write software for a program, we can use biobrick parts that MIT sends us to program cells such as bacteria to do what we want them to do. And this has a lot of really interesting applications that I think we're only just beginning to understand the implications of. Synthetic biology will really revolutionize the way we see medicine, the way we use biofuels, the way that we really live our lives. <laughs>